Okay, members, um, welcome back to the special council meeting here tonight. Um, members, I'm going to now move to agenda 12, the notice of motions and the motion on Councillor Duffy. Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate it. I'll just wait for a seconder. Happy second. Oh. Councillor Jackson seconded. Go ahead, Councillor Duffy. Thank you, Mary Graham. I'll just go on through the motion then. Um, the story of Amelia Earhart is known throughout the world, particularly her epic journey across the Atlantic, landing here in Derry City in a grassy field in Ballyarnett. She was a formidable and fearless woman, one who would be reminiscent of the many strong women who are the backbone of our city. Amelia was the first woman to fly solo non-stop across the Atlantic. She was a trailblazer, she was a feminist and part of the ERA movement. She has been celebrated across the globe for her achievements. We have many groups in our city who celebrate Amelia and her achievements and her link to the city. These groups have been working tirelessly over the past number of years to keep her name alive and they must be absolutely congratulated for this work. As a city, we have a housing development, we have an airport launch, we have a small visitor centre and at one time we had an Earhart Festival. But I believe we are missing a huge opportunity locally to tap into the tourist potential of this epic achievement of this honorary Derry Gear. Since tabling this motion, I have been contacted by groupings across the world, but mainly from America, who use the name Amelia Earhart to promote female achievements in many fields, including aviation. Some have sent their good wishes, but others have offered their assistance and desire to get involved in marking this significant 90th anniversary. Some have really exciting ideas and activities that they are developing. I believe this opportunity has the potential to increase our visitor numbers, promoting stronger links with America and what can only be a beneficial opportunity for our tourist, for our tourist product here. I, for one, would love to see a bright red Lockhead Figa plane fly over Ballyarnett next year as part of this event. I would ask that the Council support this motion. Gurmugget. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Duffy. Um, Councillor Farrell. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, the SLP is happy to support this proposal. It's, it's right and proper that we celebrate and commemorate uh, one of the seminal moments in aviation history. Amelia Earhart was a Kansas girl and she flew solo across the Atlantic for 15, 15 hours and 2,000 miles, aiming for Paris. She didn't make Paris. Uh, instead, she landed in Ballyarnett. And as all Ballyarnett people know, uh, Ballyarnett is the Paris of the North. So she wasn't far off. Um, she was met by a farmhand called Dan McKellen, and they asked her, have you flown far? And she responded, just from America. So Amelia Earhart sounded like good crack. So she was clearly a, a dairy girl at heart. And in all seriousness, we're, we're happy to support uh, the 90th anniversary program, and we look forward to engaging with uh, the Amelia Earhart Legacy Association, the Northwest Amateur Radio Club, and Studio Two, amongst other groups, to develop that program. And I'm equally mindful that the Amelia Earhart Centre at Ballyarna Country Park is currently closed. And I think it's important that we as a council develop a permanent legacy to Amelia Earhart as a tourism experience. And I hope that can be explored further at Business and Culture. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Farrell. Councillor McKinney. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks for letting us in. And thank you to Councillor Duffy for bringing this motion. Uh, Amelia Earhart landed in our district on the 21st of May 1932 in a field in the Valley Arnett area of our district. Unfortunately, Miss Earhart disappeared over the Pacific in 1937. We believe that this is a great opportunity to bring tourists into our district, as uh, Sandra has said, from America and the wider field. So we fully support this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McKinney. Members, I don't see any more indicated speakers. Uh, Councillor Duffy, do you want to sum up on the motion? Chair, Chair, I don't mind. Chair. Sorry, yes. sorry. And I have mine in too, Mayor. I'm, I'm not actually picking them up in the chat. So I'm not. So, Alderman Guy? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, 
fully supportive of uh, Councillor Duffy's motion. Uh, Amelia Earhart was a pioneering woman. Anywhere else in the world, they'd be shouting from the rooftops that the first woman to cross the Atlantic solo landed in a field just outside their city. Story to this day that keeps everyone captivated. A story of heroism, records broken, and still a story of mystery as to where exactly is Amelia Earhart's final resting place. I remember as a school kid visiting the Earhart Interpretive Centre at Ballyarnock, my late father was a great supporter of the project and council. Sadly, the, the cottage was left to, to go to uh, and the disrepair. I believe the council is missing a trick in the regeneration of the centre, an absolute gem of a story and an attraction for not only an American, but tourists from everywhere around the world. If we want to attract tourists for one more than the token one night stay, then it's stories like Amelia Earhart's landing that will attract them. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Older Guy, for that. Um, Older Man McClatty. Mayor, I'll keep it brief because it has really all been said by now. I mean, the story of Amelia Earhart um, is one that ticks so many boxes for us. That strong woman, the aviator, an aviator who made such an amazing trip and that at that time. And the tourism potential of this, as others have said, is enormous. And especially to bring over American visitors who will actually love this story. And I just pay tribute to the ladies in particular who have kept the name of Amelia Earhart alive for so long and to all the efforts that they have made to really have Happy to support this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Clontic. And I would echo your words. Uh, Councillor Harrigan. Thanks, Mayor. Yeah, uh, I think this is a good motion because uh, Amelia Earhart is part of our history. And I think we should, uh, you know, animate that. Uh, I mean, I think what, uh, you know, councillors and aldermen said about tourism is important, but this is really about. You know the history of Bally Arnott, the history of Derry, the history of this district, um, and this is something that uh, people who live here should know about and be able to celebrate and 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 see as part of our kind of global history. It, it connects us to, you know, the U.S. It connect, connects us to uh, the history of Amelia Earhart and all the projects and and campaigns she was part of. It connects us to aviation, um, and I think that this is something that uh, you know young people. And others uh, should be learning about in schools uh, and and celebrating, uh, and it's the kind of thing that can bring positivity to uh, communities, uh, especially if there's you know well organised events and and people are excited about about celebrating it and 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 uh, you know drawing out uh, the, the legacy of it, the history of it, and 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 everything else. And look, well done to all the people who've kept this uh, Amelia Earhart's uh, you know arrival in Derry. Uh, alive. I'm actually sitting in the hotel now, uh, the Northern Counties Hotel, uh, where she stayed um, while she was here. So that's another little part of the the, the history uh, of the in terms of the connection. Um, so uh, we'll be supporting this motion. Lucky, lucky for some, Councillor Horgan. Um, Councillor Donnelly. Chair and. Uh... Again, a lot of the stuff uh, has already been said, but I think it is important not only from a tourist point of view, but I think you know this is a remarkable, courageous woman, and I think that it is important that that you know her deeds and her achievement are kept alive and passed on to as many people as uh, possible. And uh, well done for the uh, councillor Duffy for for bringing this motion too. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Donnelly. Um, members, I hear no more to send the voices. Um, firstly, Councillor Duffy, really, really good motion. Um, definitely 100% back is. I think we are missing something. With my travels heading over to America, Washington, I'm here here. There's a lot of museums over there, and it'd be good to get that recognition over here, especially bringing the American tourists who are really fond of this story. So thank you. So members, if there's any member wishing to vote against the pro Mayor, can I stop? You can you can so what points are lovely. I won't take away. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. And I just want to put on record my thanks for everybody that supported the motion. And I suppose probably one of the sentiments that came through there is we are missing a the trick in terms of the legacy of Amelia Earhart and the links. 
that she has to, to the city. I think that there should be a permanent legacy here um, in, in terms of, of that epic achievement. Um, she is an honorary Jerry Gaird and we, we really should be celebrating her life and having that permanent legacy here for her. I want to put on record um, my thanks to Studio 2, the Northwest Amateur Radio Club and the Amelia Earhart Dairy Group because without them, um, I don't know if we would know half as much as we do now in terms of um, the legacy of Amelia Earhart because they have definitely, they have worked tirelessly over the course of the last 10, 20 years in terms of keeping that alive. Um, certainly, the, I think it was the Earhart Festival um, was the first place that I really got to grips with um, who Amelia Earhart was and having that the big red plane leading the, leading the parade on many occasions. So I want to just put on record my um, thanks to those groupings and hope that they can be involved in anything going forward. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Duffy. Okay, members, um, is anybody against the motion? If you are, could you let me know now or put on the chat box? I thank everybody for that motion. And Hundred percent. So the motion, the motion is uh, Councillor Duffy passes. Okay, members, the time is now eight o'clock, and I think we're going to take another comfort break. Um, members, if we get you back here for twenty past eight. So members, we'll see you back at twenty past eight. Thank you.
Okay, members, um, welcome back. Members, moving on. Alderman Ramsey. Hello, uh, yeah, hear me okay, Mayor? Can do. Yeah, uh, just uh, take the motion as read and. Um, Have you a seconder? Seconder, please. Second, Mayor. Yeah, I'll second it. Sorry, I'll raise the vote. Alderman Mathanti. Go ahead, Alderman. Okay, Alderman. thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, well, the, the reason I brought this motion uh, forward today is. Um, that we do need to recognise the deficit and the play provisions, and um, our play provision is something that obviously the play plan reviewers basically highlighted as as a major issue for us. And you know, uh, it's it's been talked about so much this last a couple of months at meetings, and it um, actually left us having the last ENR meeting, one of the longest we've ever had, because everyone wants to speak on this. Um, everyone is involved in this. Um, every councillor, alderman, and uh, uh, on here tonight um, have experiences where uh, the play parks are a major part of the family unit. Um, from uh, the you know before school, the children are on there with their parents and their grandparents, and uh, the parks are just a major asset for our rate pay and community as well. Um, and now is a time. I believe, uh, and hopefully everyone will agree tonight, that um, that we as a council, something that we can do something about, uh, that we support the need for uh, you know new investment to be identified to address all the deficits. Um, one of the major issues we've we've been faced with now after the play plan review and the state health and safety uh, review is the fact that some parks have been removed. And from me and our the last day in our meeting, um, we had uh, agreed with our our uh, officers to have them parks marked as null. Um, they may have had a mark that was on the red, but they had a mark, but they're now as null. So that will obviously get them uh, prioritised. Um, as you know, um, parks that have been there for a number of years now removed as a major issue for the local community and for the local children. Um, so. I'm just asking for support, um, you know, uh, because of this, the, well, it's simple really as regards why people would support this. Um, as I said earlier on, as that the, this is a major community thing for us as councillors and um, uh, aldermen. And um, hopefully we can find the investment, um, you know, the extra investment that's going to be needed in our capital strategy. Um, and we look forward to hopefully the capital strategy having positive news uh, on this uh, going forward. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, thank you, Alderman Ramsey. Um, next to speak is Alderman Tavani. Thank you, Mayor, for uh, allowing me in. Uh, and look, um, the, the the motion is uh, as it is. Um, it recognises the deficit in play provision. Uh, in urban areas and rural areas, but I'm going to be parochial. Uh, as everyone knows, I'm a rural councillor, and you know this issue is very, very well rehearsed over quite a number of ENR meetings, and uh, it has been going on since the the rates estimates. And I do believe um, investment has to be made uh, in play provision. And as said at many other meetings, there are gaps. There are some have some play provision, um, some have poor and low. Play provision and value. Uh, there are some then um, areas um, like Ballymagorry, um, fairly large population in the area has no play provision at all, but agreement made. But Mr. Mayor, I always say that um, I've always said that there needs to be some money uh, put forward there as an investment, and especially for those areas that we can come to an agreement on where we have groupings, should it be clubs or church or churches or schools or whatever wherever we get agreement on a site. And we all know, especially in the rural area, it's all about getting the site um, for a piece of land um, to um, build these play parks on. But I do believe those that have that provision there should uh, um, have what I've always said as seed money put forward um, to get those um, play, those areas into 
have their planning permission ready, costings, all engineering and structure works done, or ideas done, uh, surveys done, that uh, if funding became available from another source, that we're, we are speed ready and ready to go. But Chair, no problem with supporting the motion. Thank you, Alderman Tavini. Next on is Councillor Reilly. Um, yeah, thanks, Mayor, and thanks to Alderman Ramsey for putting this on the agenda. As you outlined when um, you were proposing it, Alderman Ramsey, you touched on the fact that it was one of the longest uh, ENR committee meetings because of this item, uh, and a lot of people wanted to take the chance to speak to uh, their own DEA uh, during that meeting, uh, and not to rehearse all of that here again tonight, uh, but certainly it, it is uh, worthwhile having this noted uh, on the agenda uh, this evening in this format, uh, because I, I do think it is important that the council corporately uh, gives the time uh, to this issue to to respect the fact that there are competing priorities as the motion outlines uh, for investment. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, it is important that the council documents the importance of play to people across uh, the council area, uh, specifically obviously our young people, but it's also not just for the young people. Uh, there are some of our play parks uh, that provide a, a place of uh, uh, solace to uh, the older generation, to, to parents who want to get their children out into the fresh air and, and they enjoy that uh, safe space uh, in their in their locality to do that. So it affects people right across the age spectrum. Uh, and Mayor, our party are happy to support the motion and obviously to help draw in support, uh, financial and otherwise, from other government bodies. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Reilly. Uh, Councillor Logue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor, we in Sinn Féin are committed to fulfilling the child's right to play if enshrined in Article 31 of the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. The development of this 15-year play plan represents a key component of this commitment, establishing a strategic approach to the enhancement of play opportunities across the district. The play plan will support Council and other stakeholders to work in partnership to address those barriers and restrict play that restrict play opportunity, which ensuring the available resources are invested in a manner that best meets play need. Strict criteria, criteria will help to ensure the capital investment is targeted towards meeting areas of highest need. While Council are the primary providers of fixed play, in recent years additional investment has been made through non Council rates, for example, neighbourhood renewal funding or funding secured by community organisation. Ad additional investment in play is welcomed by Council. However, it is important that play areas are developed by non-Council providers adhere to as agreed minimum standards. Recognising the challenges also of making play need in the rural areas, the play plan will establish a process aimed at ensuring rural areas are not disadvantaged. We fully support this motion for Council to develop an investment fund that supports this strategy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Logue. Councillor Ferguson. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you to Alderman Ramsey for bringing this motion forward. Play is a, a really important part to uh, any child's life, and a play park enables that. Coming from a village that didn't have a play park for so many years, the difference that it's made is a huge uh, success for the, the, the wider community. I know the likes of Eglinton are currently awaiting the new subcontractors, and they are anticipating a, a, a tough summer for some of their young ones. So it really, really is an important issue for many of our residents. Um, when I went to speak with the P7s recently, the biggest number, the, the biggest thing that they wanted to do lab me on was more play parks. And I think that's it. We we have our respective DAs, and we're all going, to, all going to lobby for those DAs. But also, I think in the heart of hearts, we all know that every single area and every single place deserves an, a really good play park for the children. So that's where I appreciate this motion, because it means that we can work together and make sure that even though there will be priorities, but at the end of the day, that every area should get a play park. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ferguson. Councillor Raymond Barr. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I would agree wholeheartedly with, with this motion. The deficit in the tree revision has been identified in the tree park strategy, but two summers will have passed without any progress in real terms. The extra usage of play areas during the pandemic has worsened the situation in Straban with a further deterioration in the parks. This is an, an amenity which is vital to children's recreation and mental health uh, well-being, again, especially in Straban. Given the chronic shortage of park and green spaces in Straban, uh, this just further exacerbates the problem. A totally renewed investment is badly needed to tackle the problem. I hear talk of competing priorities, but there's no bigger priority in Strabane than this. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Barr. Councillor in lead. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, we uh, totally support this uh, proposal. Um, parks are essential. Um, play is essential in a child's development. Um, and money invested in parks is not money wasted at all. I'm sure the return in terms of the positive outcomes for uh, children and young people in terms of health and well-being um, is massive. Um, like it's essential that our parks have equal access for children of all abilities. So it's essential that uh, disability access um, exists in all parks um, as well. Um, it's, you know, one in three children in our uh, DEA are living below the poverty line. So it's it's really really important that like all our children have access to parks that they you know are able to to walk to a park uh, because not every household has a car either, um, and it's you know this should be funded from central government, um, in in terms of like they could get money out of uh, the obesity strategy considering that they're meant to be doing a lot of work on on childhood obesity, um, but like why is it that central government only find funding? Uh, during a crisis, like we're we're coming out of a pandemic here, uh, where we really need to be investing in the health and well-being of all our peoples, uh, from the cradle to the grave. And parks are an essential public resource that supports the health and well-being of people um, and of our communities as well. Um, this is something that should be key to the to the rebuild plan uh, that puts people first uh, as we come out of COVID. So completely uh, support this uh, motion and thank you for. For raising it, um, Alderman Ramsey. And um, thank you, Councillor Neil. Uh, members, I don't see any further speakers. Um, uh, Alderman Ramsey, do you want to sum up? Mayor, just to thank everyone for their support. Um, and I look forward to the motion passing through. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Alderman Ramsey. Um. Members, I'm not hearing any dissenting voices on the motion here. Um, is there anybody against it? If you raise now. Okay, members, we'll take this proposal as unanimous. So well done, Councillor Ramsey. Okay, members, moving on. Councillor Doyle. Fair. Um, just to give you a heads up, I'm uh, travelling at the moment on the bus, so yeah, background noise is a bit uh, loud. Just let me know. Um, I'm happy to take the motion as read. Uh, can I have a second? Please? I'll yeah. second, Mayor Brian Tierney. Okay, thank you, Councillor Attorney. Go ahead, Councillor Doyle. Thank, thank you, Brian, and just for the record as well, Mayor, uh, because I'm on the phone, I just have to apologise to Councillor Harkin. Uh, his motion with regards to advice services, I was due to second, but I couldn't figure out how to do it. But uh, alas, uh, I'm glad the focus of our meeting tonight so far has been Bally Arnott and play parks. Uh, and I welcome the determination again uh, across all parties to make uh, Bally Arnott its focus with regards to uh, Councillor Duffy's motion as well. We're blessed in this city uh, and does take with beautiful natural spaces such as Brook Park and St. Collins Park. But there is one area of natural beauty at the periphery, which is, I would argue, overlooked and unloved, not by users or residents, but by this council, and that's Bally Arnott Country Park. I want to make clear that this motion and my remarks are not aimed at individual staff or officers, but there is an onus on us all to work to ensure the, pro the park is brought up to standard. I visited it many times and walked uh, with park users and residents. On one visit alone, I was able to take 50 different photos of areas in the park that are simply unacceptable. 
the remnants of fires in wooded areas, unsteady surfaces and inaccessible areas for those with mobility problems are just the tip of the iceberg. The play park is of a high standard uh, and welcomed by families and young people in the area who often build it after school. Unfortunately, in my opinion, that's where my praise ends. I had a call from the family of a park user in a wheelchair a few weeks ago to express their fury, rightly so, uh, that their relative had gone over a pothole in the main thoroughfare in the park so deep that he had actually fallen from his chair. A week before that, another resident uh, had felt uh, the need to ring me uh, and the police because a car had been abandoned in the park with its windows smashed overnight, and I know other uh, representatives from the DAA are aware of these issues as well. The sight of parents having to walk their children into bushes adjacent to the play park to go to the bathroom is another bone of contention for me, notwithstanding the child protection issues that it raises. A few months ago, we signed off 15K to progress the next stage of planning for the 2015 Landscape Master Plan. The capital uh, required remains on MET 910 uh, to ensure that we prioritise this plan to completion as soon as possible. However, it's not acceptable to me that in lieu of that investment, we simply allow the park to fall into obscurity. I acknowledge that our maintenance teams continue to cut grass and empty bins, but quite frankly, the state of areas in the park uh, would not be allowed to happen if this was Brook Park. I welcome, in fact, that uh, Namaya GAA have also begun consulting the future of the park as key stakeholders in the community. They too recognise that something has to change. The team I'm proposing that we establish will focus solely on the park. We need technical staff to look at drainage, surface, surfacing, horticulture and toilet access. I've also been in contact with DFI Roads in relation to signage and road safety, and they should be invited uh, to engage as part of this work. As I've said before, the community toilet scheme may well be fit for purpose in other areas, uh, but to ask users to go to the north side for Valley Arnett is not good enough. We need safe and clean toilet facilities in the park, uh, and the resource that goes with that must be found. Uh, I look forward to meeting with the relevant directors to scope the work we must take forward in conjunction with park users. Uh, and uh, just to, to thank uh, the officers that I've spoken to already around this um, for their determination that uh, the work can be done uh, to progress um, the, the uh, park for all the benefit of all its uh, users and for the wider community. Thank you, Mayor. Well, thank you, Commissioner Doyle. Um, let's give Councillor Turney. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and I want to thank you. Two seconds, Councillor Turney. Uh, Councillor Doyle, you make sure your mic's off. Way out there, Councillor yeah. Turney. All right, Mayor, thank you. Um, and thanks to Councillor Doyle um, for tabling this motion. Um, and on behalf of the SDLP, we'll be supporting the motion. Um, and I also want to put on record our thanks to the Ballyarnard Urban Park users and disabled persons group for the work um, that they have been engaged on um, over this last uh, number of months and in relation to highlighting some of the issues that are going on at the park. Um, the Ballyarna County Park is a beautiful space, um, and in over recent years we have seen uh, the, the, the new addition of, of the play park down there, which we have seen people from right across uh, this the city coming uh, to enjoy uh, the beautiful scenery and, and the children enjoying the, the, the play park, which has been great to see. Um, over this last while we have seen reports of ongoing uh, levels of ambitious behaviour within the park, um, and I again uh, condemn uh, those actions because it's certainly not something that I want to see in any park, but particularly not in the in the, my own uh, local park. And I would appeal once again to those people to stop uh, destroying uh, our beautiful uh, areas. I fully support the proposal from Councillor Doyle to set up a multidisciplinary team, um, and I look forward to engaging with the, with that team uh, and hearing the views of the wider community. The master plan, which Councillor Doyle has mentioned. Um, I, I believe it's an exciting opportunity uh, for the area, but it's been going on um, for as long as I have been on this council. Um, and in my view, it's a faster plan we need now, not a master plan. Um, as I've said already, Chair, this is my local park, and I spoke about this at the recent ENR meeting, um, which was covered within the last motion. I would much rather, um, unfortunately, um, at the minute, due to the current state of Ballyarna County Park, take my own children to another park in a different area of the city because the facilities at, at Ballyarna County Park simply aren't there. Um, Councillor Doyle has mentioned parents having to take their children under the bush to, to, use the, to, to go to the toilet, and that is simply not good enough. I disagree that the park is being ignored or neglected by this council, uh, but I can see uh, where one might get that opinion from. I would love to be able to sit at Ballyarna County Park um, and have 
an area like we see in Brook Park and other parks across the country. Councillor Attorney, can you bring your mercy close, please? Yep. Um, and have a, a cup of tea while my children uh, enjoy playing in the play park. And I look forward to seeing uh, that come. The toilets have been raised already a number of times, um, and it's something that we that we should see. I agree in relation to the community toilet scheme at Northside. It's not good enough and shouldn't be expected and expecting people to travel that far to use the bathroom. Um, all in all, Chair, on behalf of the SDLP, we're uh, only too happy to support the motion, and we look forward to engaging with the multidisciplinary team once it's set up. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Turney. Next on the list, Councillor Duffy. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you to Councillor Doyle for bringing the motion. Um, Ballyarna Country Park is one of my favourite places. It is absolutely a beautiful space with a very popular play park and two growing GAA clubs um, situated either within the grounds or very close proximity. The park has a master plan, as has been um, outlined. It would be absolutely transformational, but would need significant investment to really achieve anything that is contained within it. Going back more than a few years, we had a suggestion that the first phase of this would see electricity trunked in, which would allow the local community partnership to get on site and manage the play park, oversee toilet facilities, including accessible facilities, and then with the possible addition of a small pavilion, could see a cafe on site. This was all exciting stuff, but it has been sitting on a shelf somewhere since then, um, due to lack of funding mostly. Um, I'm not going to concentrate on the vandalism of the park or the burden of equipment. We are all on record um, condemning this destruction. What I would like to do is concentrate on the positive potential of the park. Over the past few weeks, I've been engaging with both Namaya and Brian Oaks, who have massive personal aspirations for themselves as a club and for, for the park. Some of these ambitions aren't currently contained within the, the current master plan, um, but they have the absolute potential to transform the park as well and their place of sport and excellence. I know I have spoken to some of the council officers in relation to this potential, um, and I have absolutely no hesitation in supporting this motion because I think a multi-agency group um, going forward to look at how we can best use the park is the way is the way forward. But let's get the master plan off the shelf now. Let's re-engage with the local community, engage with the sport, sports clubs that are there on site and have really ambitious plans for the local area and let's see what is actually achievable see what fountain we can tap into and let's get something done in the park because it is a beautiful space um it's on my doorstep um during lockdown we talked about going out walks and Ballyarna country park is one of the places i oh, sir do think you can bring your remarks yeah. to close please absolutely mayor no problem um thank you to council Doyle for bringing the motion and thank you mayor for allowing me in and i look forward to seeing progress on this Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Duffy. Uh, Alderman Tavere. Thank you, Mayor, for allowing me in. Uh, and on behalf of the DUP, uh, we have no problem uh, in supporting the notice of motion coming forward here. And I think over this last year and a half since COVID came upon us, um, our green space areas and our, pa our parks have been become very, very important for all ages, from the cradle nearly to the oldest person that can, that can go about. And uh, look, at the end of the day, I'm um, just disappointed to hear um, about the antisocial behaviour and the issues uh, and around that. And I do believe this uh, multidisciplinary team maybe would look at addressing a number of those issues and anything that deals with the health and safety issues needs to be addressed. But happy to support the motion, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Savelli. Um, Councillor Doyle. I am not seeing any further members who will be speak here. So, Councillor Doyle, do you want to come on and sum up? Thank you, Mayor. Um, can I just thank everybody for their, their comments. And, uh, you know, the, the, the site recently um, of uh, committed GAA players going out and doing a litter pick uh, in, in Ballina County Park just shows how embedded the park is in the local community. And it's uh, really uh, positive to see support from across uh, this uh, virtual chamber, and uh, have to give uh, Chris Tierney kudos for the uh, faster plan rather than master plan. Uh, that was a cracker, and I look forward to working with uh, all colleagues across the DEA uh, to see the park being used uh, to its uh, fullest uh, capacity. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Councillor Doyle. Um, 
Mr. Doyle, you just turn your mic off here. Members, um, I'm not hearing any dissenting voices on this. Is there any member against the, the motion of Councillor Doyle? If you are, could you let me know now? Okay, we'll take the, the motion of Councillor Doyle as unanimous. That's the pass. Well done, Councillor Doyle, and safe journey home as well. Members, moving on, um, Councillor McHugh. To move. Good evening, thank you, Mayor. I'll take the motion as read. Yep. Bit of a seconder. Open the chat box there, Mayor Michaela. Thank you, Michaela. Thank you, uh, Mayor. Um, I'm sure members will be well aware that uh, this issue um, about rolling out the uh, community safety warden scheme to the to the rural rural areas. Um it's something I have raised on several occasions in the past, both within uh, the council chamber and indeed uh and the PCSP itself uh, when I was on it. Um as have other councillors, dairy councillors as well, I have to add, not not just myself. But uh currently the community safety warden scheme as we know is is it's only resource to cover the neighbourhood renewal areas, which essentially is Derry City and Strahan Town. And, uh, you know, I, I totally understand that because of the popula larger population, that there's uh, a greater need in those areas for the community safety wardens and the antisocial behaviour and crime statistics and all that are uh, far more significant in those areas. But that doesn't mean, Mayor, that uh, the rural areas and the, and the smaller towns and villages don't share those same issues, albeit on a smaller scale. So, um, Mayor, that, that's why I'm bringing this motion today. It's to firm up, I suppose, councillors or sorry, councils already a stated, stated aspiration to roll out the community safety warden scheme to the rural areas. And uh, I've had discussions on this proposal with Dermot Harrigan, um, who oversees the PCSP, and I'd like to take the opportunity to thank Dermot for, for his input and advice and guidance on it as well. He's always been very cooperative with myself when uh, trying to arrange maybe on-site meetings and the like in, in the Castle Derg area after uh, antisocial incidents. Um, so I commend him for that. Um, if this scheme is, is rolled out in, in, in the area, it'll be essentially meeting the same requirements that the rest of the council area has. You know, it'll primarily deal with, as I said before, antisocial behaviour and minor crime. And I mean, we know the community safety warden scheme is not going to uh, be the cure for all our ills in that sense, but what, what it will do is it will provide that visual reassurance to people and their community, particularly older people and vulnerable people, and you know they can go along and speak to them and reassure them and talk maybe to some of our younger people who maybe from time to time are engaged in that kind of antisocial behaviour and therefore negates the need for to bring in police and where you would end up with a situation where you have young people um, end up with, with criminal records. Um, you know they'll also be able to, to complement I suppose some of the, the, the key agencies that are already working within the area in terms of our community groups and housing executive, um, et cetera. So, you know, that's also a positive if this motion is passed. So um, that's essentially, that's essentially it, uh, Mayor. Hopefully I would, uh, I would appeal the councillors to, to back it unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McHugh. Uh, Councillor McKeela Boyd, do you want on there? You second that? I'm just happy to second it and support the motion. Um, it is indeed a very important uh, motion brought forward by Councillor McHugh this evening. Uh, it's an issue that has been raised constantly with with uh, many members, um, particularly in the rural areas. So happy to support. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Boy. Councillor Edwards. Mayor, thanks for letting me in, and I want to thank Councillor McHugh for bringing this important motion 
the council uh, tonight, and I hope that it does add weight to all the discussions uh, we've had as, as their representatives um, on the issue, um, especially in the last year I've been a uh, councillor. And like other representatives uh, in the day, um, I've been inundated with complaints um, by residents uh, and the public regarding antisocial behaviour, especially in Castle Derg, say Mills and the Glebe. And I am delighted this week that I've spoken to uh, the lead community safety warden, um, and they've agreed to, to visit say Mills and the Glebe, which is, has got a lot of antisocial uh, behaviour. And this is after uh, months of lob lobbying. But I have been told that this is only temporary and ad hoc and where resources permit. So I do believe that there is a need to have a more permanent scheme uh, as outlined in the motion before us tonight. Uh, and I've also spoke to Dermot Harrigan as well um, this week. And, and I know that he is looking at proposals to bring forward a permanent scheme for the Derg. And I do fully welcome that. And I echo the comments of Councillor McHugh as well, that up until now, as representatives, the only sort of recourse we have is contacting the, the PSNA regarding antisocial uh, behaviour. Um, our, ne our nearby police team, they are they are doing what they can, but they are stretched across the DEA. They're under-resourced. They're mobile, given that they operate um, out of Straban station, so they're not always available, and they shouldn't be really tackling this issue alone. Um, and I think that criminalising their young people uh, is not the way to go either. Um, these young people need engagement, they need role models, and I think that every agency... Um, oh, sorry, Albert, could you bring your remarks to a close, please? Yep, no problem. Happy to uh, support the proposal there, but um, thanks for Councillor McHugh uh, bringing it forward, and I see other speakers in, so I imagine there'll be a few amendments to extend this out there, but thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Uh, next on the... We have Alderman Tavelli. Thank you, Mayor, for allowing me in, and I've declared an interest earlier on um, regarding being a member of the PCSP. But I, I have to say, I welcome the proposal or the notice of motion coming here um, today by Councillor McHugh. This is an issue has been raised over quite a number of meetings as well. And look, um, we have always listened to the, the good news stories of the good work that the, these um, safety wardens carry out uh, in those areas where they're prevalent to be there. Uh, and look, the you know. As an incoming chair of the PCSP, I'm meeting with Dermot Harrigan tomorrow morning, and I can assure uh, rural councillors that it's the first thing on my list to discuss tomorrow morning, and um, you know, and around the safety wardens for those rural areas. Um, happy to support the the um, notice of motion, Mayor, but I have one just small amendment, and and it's just to include um, into the rural towns and villages of Sparrow and their DEA. Uh, just being parochial, and I would be hopeful that maybe Councillor McHugh would accept that small amendment, but happy to support the notice of motion, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Tavelli. Um No problem, that Chair. Um, Alderman Tavelli will need a second or fret. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't work like that, Mr. Ricky, so we'll, we'll have to take that as an amendment on that motion. I'll second um, Alderman Tavelli's amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ramsey. Okay, members, does anybody want to speak on the amendment? Uh, yes, uh, Mayor, could I speak on it, please, Councillor McKinney? Yeah, go ahead, Councillor McKinney. Uh, I wonder, could the amendment be amended to actually have rural towns and villages throughout our district?
Uh, Councillor McKinney, that's going to be a further amendment. We're going to have to deal with this amendment first, so we are. Enough, Mayor, but uh, on the motion, if I may, for a minute. I didn't catch that, Councillor McKinney. Say that again. Mayor, can I possibly speak on the actual motion uh, just for a minute, please? Yeah, we're going to deal with this amendment first. Councillor can I, do you want to speak on the, the amendment first? Not your amendment, the amendment by Alderman and um, Devaney? Yeah, I'm quite happy with that amendment, actually, uh, Mayor. But what I was just going to say is, like, we fully support the motion. But I'd just like to add that, uh, and only two wells of problems. I mean, I've had to uh, call the police out about antisocial behaviour. Uh, in the uh, misbehaving in the Lochmore area, which is an area of outstanding beauty. And in fact, we've had uh, to call the police out to Eglinton Village for um, antisocial behaviour. And in one case, it was a 14 year old had to be taken home, a uh, young girl fully drunk. So uh, well, uh, we do support the motion, yeah, on the amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McKinney. Uh, Councillor Barr, do you want to speak on the amendment or the proposal? The proposal, Mayor. Yeah. Okay, members, members, um, is there anybody against the amendment here? You, you, I see Councillor Donnelly abstain. Any members against the proposal or the amendment? Okay, I'm not hearing any dissenting voices, members. The the amendment passes. Okay, now go back to the original the motion. Councillor Barr. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I agree totally that the, the problem of uh, community safety and antisocial behaviours on the increase in rural areas, especially in, say, in Oswald, there's been a, a huge increase on antisocial behaviour. However, I would dispute the suggestion that community safety wardens have had a positive impact in Strabane Town. They're very rare and unusual species in Strabane Town. But as I said, I agree totally uh, with the motion I'll be supporting it. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Barr. Um, members, I have nobody in the chat box. Any further members want to speak? If not, we will. Points for McHugh, sum up. Okay, over to you, Councillor McHugh. Uh, Gordon Ogan, uh, um, was Councillor McKinney not that, uh, was he satisfied with Councillor Devaney's amendment or? Was Just he... on that, um, it was, it's an or, it was an or extension added on to the motion, so he hasn't came back in the chat box. Now to request he speak on that, so we moved on. Councillor McKenna, are you happy enough there? Uh? No, just leave it as it is, Mayor. Thanks very much. Uh, no problem at all there. Thank you. Cheers. Thank uh, you very you. much, Councillor McKenna, for that. Okay, Councillor McHugh, do you want to sum up here? Yeah, thanks, Mayor. Just to say, well, thanks to my seconder and indeed all those who spoke in favour of the motion. And uh, I think the amendment from Councillor Devaney uh, compliments the motion. Maybe, maybe I was the one being a bit uh, too parochial in the terms of the wording of my motion. But uh, thanks to uh, Councillor Devaney for contacting me prior to, to to run that past me. But as I say, Chair, you know, hopefully this passes, and then that gives a green light to uh, our council officers to work in partnership with those other agencies, particularly the PCSP, to to roll out a fully resourced program to the rural towns and villages of our city and district. So, going to meet my little girl. Thank, thank you, Councillor McHugh. That. Okay, members, we have a motion on the table here. Is there any members looking to vote against this? Um, Councillor Dolly, are you abstaining on this substantial motion? Okay, members, not hearing from that. Members, I'm hearing nobody against the motion, so. It's unanimous and 
we'll move on. Members, House of Farrell be moved. Uh, thanks, Mayor. Uh, I'll, I'll take the motion as read and a second, Chair. Second, Chair. Councillor Mooney. Thank you, uh, Councillor Mooney. Uh, there's not much uh, that can be said about McGee that hasn't already been said on a regular or repeated basis over the last 18 months. Um, the area has been waiting 57 years for meaning, meaningful uh, university expansion. We have waited patiently, uh, but our patience is wearing thin. We have the, the smallest uni of any city on these islands. We have the highest unemployment, highest economic inactivity, and lowest wages of any city on these islands. And that's not a coincidence. Uh, it's not rocket science. Universities create opportunity, they create employment, they create wealth. And those are three commodities in very short supply in our city. Um, New decade, new approach was published 18 months ago, and it included a commitment to bring forward expansion proposals for McGee. 532 days later, uh, we've had no proposals uh, and no progress, just dithering, delay, and downright avoidance. We pressed the First Ministers repeatedly, and we have been ignored, blanked, and dismissed repeatedly. Like it or lump it, the First Ministers own all of the commitments within New Decade New Approach, not just the ones that they have a personal interest in. And that includes McGee. And don't get me started on the Economy Minister, uh, who has specific responsibility for McGee expansion. Diane Dodd had a hussy fit uh, when it was announced that Health Sciences would be relocated to McGee. And her successor, Paul Frew, can't give a straight answer on whether he supports the 10,000 students target. Um, if the first ministers and the economy minister aren't prepared to make this happen, they need to tell us. If they think it's too hard or, or too costly, they need to tell us. And if they think Derry doesn't need it or Derry doesn't deserve it, they need to tell us. Derry needs university expansion. We need the commitment and new decade, new approach uh, to be honored and to be delivered. Uh, we need to see proposals and progress uh, and we need to see them now. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Farrell. Councillor Heaney. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we're happy to support this motion that Councillor Farrell has brought forward uh, this evening. Um, maybe just to start on a sort of point of detail, like we assume, like ourselves, Councillor Farrell has met with Ulster University, so he, he would be aware that they wouldn't be able to uh, use any additional miles and places if they were allocated tomorrow because they're still looking at the courses that they want to add to the, the current perspectives for McGee and actually have spare miles uh, for the current course offer. However, you know, so therefore focusing on the executive office as a magic bullet for the expansion misses a sort of point that Ulster University as an institution still needs to get its act together and produce an updated business case which will propose how any new Mazen will be will be used within that campus. So obviously we know um, that the plans are followed with his own reasons for, for trying to focus on the executive office, but I've like I've been directly involved in trying to progress this issue for years, including during my time when I was on the executive office. And it's my experience that there are two key issues uh, that have held back the expansion of McGee for years now. One is the lack of prioritization of McGee by some and the leadership of Ulster University and the foot dragon over a proper business case. But the other is a lack of commitment and in some case downright resistance from successive DUP ministers and the Department of the Economy. And to be fair, the local DUP representatives, I wouldn't tar them with that brush. They've supported McGee. But it is the Department of the Economy that has a responsibility for McGee and for the expansion of it. And that department uh the the, jail, the the DUP have jealously guarded since 2007, including when faced with a choice between finance and economy. They can only do that because of the largest party at Stormont. The next election will be an opportunity to change that and finally get McGee the 10,000 student places that it really deserves. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Heaney. Councillor Donnelly. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Chair, look, the, the six county state and its university in the form of Ulster uh, University has failed us consistently and it has robbed us consistently 
and it's broken promise after promise for 60 years. And yet now these same people are expecting us to bail them out. Somebody said to me recently, could you just imagine if Leinster House or the University of Ireland went to Cork and demanded a third of their new investment package because they had overspent so much in Dublin? They would be laughed out of the county and quite rightly so. There's a reason, Chair, why Cork is booming and has got 40,000 students as compared to Derry's three. And it's simple, it's because Cork stands up for itself and is not afraid to act in its own best interests. Our failure to do likewise is precisely that, it's our failure. And anyone here who expects Belfast to act for the betterment of Derry is either part of a political party that's run from Belfast, they're either bought or paid for, or ju they're just a fool. We have to stop setting ourselves up to fail. We need a full discussion in the Northwest, free from the interference of Belfast, whether it be the, U the Ulster University or Stormont. And we need it about how we intend to develop this entire region, and that includes Derry, Donegal and Tyrone. And it's for the betterment of all citizens here, whether they, dis whether they are Irish, whether they're British, whether they're European or whether they are. And there's more and more people believe that discussion has to centre on the development of an independent university for the Northwest, a university that will drive the regeneration of, of the region for everybody that's in that region. But until we have a proper plan, one that can deliver as a region and independently, and not some patch up job approved by self interested Belfast carpetbaggers, we have to press pause on releasing any funding to those who will not deliver for us. As councillors, we have a responsibility to provide proper and transparent governance over the region's finances, and it would be completely you, remiss. Mr. Dolly, can you bring your that, remarks to a close, please? It would be remiss of us, Chair. Now, I, I believe that until the uh, Ulster University agreed to make good on their contracts, where are the 10,000 students they promised in 1990, 2001, 2010, and recently in 2020? So and, uh, uh, I, it's my, I'm going to make a, a, I'm going to propose an amendment to this motion and I'll put it in the chat box now, Chair. And Councillor Donnie, you have a seconder there. Councillor Gallagher. Okay, members, we have an amendment on here. Um, does any member wish to speak? Or we'll give you some minutes just. Yes, Mayor, I think I might be next on the list. Okay, Alderman McClintock. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, first of all, can I welcome the comments from Councillor Heaney that the, the local DUP reps will always stand up for this local area, and it is good that he notices that and uh, makes a comment on it. We have already had discussions with the Economy Minister, Paul Frew, and he is aware of our demand for increased expansion in the Ulster University alongside what the Ulster University themselves have to do. I don't agree with the um, amendment by Councillor uh, Donnelly. We won't support the amendment, but happy with the original motion. I think that uh, Minister Paul Frey has already shown his commitment to this region with his announcement tonight of £4.5 million uh, to support our connectivity with Great Britain, which will obviously be a great benefit to our city of Derry Airport. And we will continue to lobby with um, the Minister for Economy. And we, uh, we do realise that we are going through a period of change within the party, but we are committed to working with the, um, the new leadership to ensure that the North West gets every opportunity that it possibly can 
we will not support the amendment because we don't believe that is the way forward um, to try to stop city deal funding to the university. We need to put money in to get the results that we want as well. So thank you for that, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman McClintic. Uh, Councillor Harrigan, do you want to speak on the amendment? Thanks, Mary. Yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> yeah, we'll be happy to support uh, the original motion and the amendment. Um, look, uh, you know, uh, we've been campaigning, uh, generations of people have been campaigning for uh, McGee expansion for 60 years. And um, we've been let down over and over again. And even when we think we've won, uh, we, we see those promises and commitments, uh, you know, dashed in front of our eyes. And um, the same seems to be happening with the new decade, new approach, where uh, we believed we won a commitment to 10,000 students. And now what we have is inaction. And, and this has been the same story over and over again. And yes, there will be some developments, the medical school, but as a GP told us the other day, uh, we won't see begin to see doctors graduating from McGee for another decade. Um, so a lot can happen in a decade. So I, I think we have to continue to push very, very hard uh, here. Um, and look, you know, uh, I think uh, Councillor Heaney attempted to give a kind of Sinn Féin history of why there is no McGee. Uh, part of it's true. Uh, you know, Ulster University, top tier, uh, people have never made the commitment to the Northwest and Derry and, and they are district. Uh, the DUP uh, on, a, on a, you know, the from Stormont uh, never prioritised it. But when we had increasing numbers uh, of people going up to Stormont from the nationalist parties here, uh, they, I don't think that they prioritised the fight for McGee or for the Northwest. Uh, when was institutions ever threatened in Stormont to get McGee delivered? Never. Not once, uh, and that tells a lot about people's seriousness about taking the fight for dairy in the northwest right into Stormont. So that's that's how I would look at it, um, and um, that's why we think uh, there needs to be mechanisms for us to keep the pressure on Ulster University. Uh, they 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 shouldn't be getting all this funding handed to them as we've said over and over again. Uh, so Hargan, could you bring your remarks there, close, yep. please? Yeah, finish up now, Mayor. Thank you. They shouldn't be getting uh, the these huge sums of money uh, that that are coming into Derry handed to them without lock guarantees uh, that there's going to be uh, a commitment to moving forward with ten thousand students as a basic uh, agreement, um, because that's the the way we know can really lead the revitalisation uh, of Derry, the district, and the entire northwest. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Hargan. Councillor Ferguson, you want to speak on that amendment? I'll speak on both. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, uh, Councillor Farrell, to bring, for bringing this motion forward. We fully support this motion um, and the ask for 10,000 students, which must be delivered for McGee. We do believe that if we get the spaces, then the courses and the students will follow. Look at the success of the medical school. We have our first medical students coming on the 23rd of August, which is going to be a fantastic day for McGee. We've had um, a, a commitment from Randox for uh, basically um, funding for the chair of the medical school for the next five years, which is another uh, great achievement. We also have the scholarships from a local business um, here in the town of Heron Brothers for four years. And these are all fantastic things that have come along with the, the the very start of our medical school. So we think that the 10,000 students is just a starting block. We need more. That's the minimum and we need it now. As for the amendment, where I do feel Councillor Donnelly's frustration and I am fully behind him that we need to have that commitment. I also am dubious about the fact that we've already um, committed to the details of the city deal and the legality around that and I wouldn't want it to postpone anything when it comes to the expansion and the city deal so we won't be supporting the amendment but we will be supporting the, the motion thank you thank you thank you Councillor Ferguson Councillor Gallagher do you want to speak on the amendment thank you for letting some <clears throat> Mayor see when we talk about NDNA uh, and I know the country that 
was talking previously there about 50, 60 years. You see how when we talk about these plans, we could go far back, we could talk about, remember the plan targeted on social need? And then we had you targeted on social need. And then we had the Good Friday Agreement. We had St Andrew's Agreement. We had anti-poverty strategies. We had the Programme for Government. We had NDNA. And it's just Groundhog Day over and over again. We get served up with sweet apple pie, as they call it. It is nothing. Uh, no checks and balances, no budget allocations, no numbers. Nothing but reduction in services. And we're seeing that time and time again with this university. And we see them shipping out courses. We see them shipping out students time and time again. How many Groundhog Days do we need? Do we say, let's put a stop to this? Let's put a stop to this. And the only way we'll do it is supporting this amendment and saying enough is enough and we're taking no more. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Gar uh, Gallagher. Um, Councillor Rupert Barr. Thank you, Mayor. Um, well, I welcome the motion and I welcome the amendment as well. It's not often we have someone in this part of the world that, that we, we can use as leverage to force ministerial departments to keep their promises. Uh, this part of the world, West Laban, we've been fed a day of broken promises for 100 years. So, by all means, I would endorse the postponement of releasing funding until we get a guarantee regarding numbers of students. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Barr. Councillor Duffy? Thank you, Mayor. And I just want to comment on um, the amendment and to say that Sinn Féin won't be supporting the amendment. Um, we have been here before um, with similar emotions and similar amendments. I think the last one was um, Councillor McCluskey in her time um, tabled a motion very similar to this. Um, unfortunately, the city deal money, um, from my understanding of it and, and how it has been explained to me, Council may have been the vehicle that applied um, for the overall city deal package, but the money doesn't belong to the council. The money belongs to the individual projects, the individual um, strategic business cases that have been um, set up around it. So in terms of those projects um, that are linked to the university, they belong to the university. They are there because the university has worked up um, those innovative projects. So it's not our money to withhold. So we can't, even if we pass that motion, we wouldn't have the, the power to see it through. So we won't be supporting it, but just on the university, you, you do have to step up. Um, we, we have been waiting an awfully long time for um, Ulster to step up and, and to ensure that they do everything that they, they need done to, to, to deliver on McGee. But we also do need the Department of Economy because Ulster can't do it on their own. And we have had many agreements over many, many years. And we do need to see delivery because it is a historic shame that we don't have the university in Derry that we deserve and that we should have. So um, in terms of the original motion, Connor has already spoke to it and we will support that. The amendment, we won't be supporting it because I don't believe that we have the power to even do it. So we won't be supporting it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Duffy. Councillor Farrell. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, in terms of uh, Councillor um, Donnelly's amendment, you know, I get the, the public concerns about the empty promises and the false dawns relating to Ulster University. Um, you know, the one plan said that we we're going to have ten thousand students by twenty twenty, and you know, it's twenty twenty one now, and we don't have ten thousand students. Um, and I share those concerns, but like Councillor Duffy. Um, I live in the real world, and I realise that council does not control this funding. Uh, there are various organisations, including the UK Treasury and the Northern Ireland Executive, etc. So, what Councillor Donnelly is asking us to do cannot be done. Simple as that. So, whilst I understand the sentiment, 
um, of uh, his amendment, um, I would question its um, lawfulness. So I get it, uh, but we won't be voting for it. Thank you. Could I have a point of order, Chair? Go ahead, Councillor Gallagher. Chair, if this, if this motion is on the floor, then it's legal. That would be my understanding. It's not a point of order. It's not a point of order. And I think, I, think find, I think you'll find it as a point of order that when we, when we talk about amendments and proposals, they must be legal and it's in the standard orders, then it must be legal to be on the floor. And if it's on the floor, it's legal. Yeah, but the point is, Paul, it's not Chief. deliverable. We don't have the ability to do it. Sorry, sorry, uh, members. Sorry, members. Sorry, members. Through the through the mayor here. Um, I'm going to bring in fault here. Yeah, I think there's a distinction which is being drawn here between whether or not the council has the power uh, to do the action which is um, required by the amendment, um, and or as to whether or not it is a uh, a valid amendment. Um, so it, it has been accepted. And that's the point that Councillor Gallagher is making, and as such, it's a valid amendment, which is before the that isn't to comment on whether or not the council actually has the power to take the action, uh, which is requested by the amendment. Do you feel that? Thank you, thank you, Paul, right there. So, members, we're going to pass on now to Stephen to take a vote on the amendment. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so, all those in favour? So, Alderman Alan Bresen? Against. Alderman Morris Devenny? Against, Stephen. Alderman Darren Guy? Against. Alderman Derek Hussey? Against. Alderman Keith Kerrigan? Against. Alderman Hilary McClintock? Against. Alderman David Ramsey? Against. Alderman Graham Wark? Against. Councillor Jason Barr? Against. Councillor Raymond Barr? For Stephen. Councillor John Boyle? Against. Councillor Michaela Boyle? Against. Councillor Sean Carr? For. Mr. Sean McCusack. Against. Mr. Anza Dobbins. Against, Stephen. Mr. Gary Donnelly. Or. Mr. Emmett Doyle. Mr. Sandra Duffy. Against. Mr. Stephen Edwards. Against. Mr. Rory Farrell. Against. Answer Rachel Ferguson. Against Stephen. Answer Paul Fleming. Against Stephen. Answer Paul Gallagher. Or. Uh, Answer Sean Harkin. Or. Answer Connor Heaney. Against. Answer Christopher Jackson. Against. Answer Dan Kelly. Against. Answer Patricia Logue. Against. Answer Kieran McGuire. Answer Rory McHugh. Against Stephen. Answer Philip McKinney. Against Stephen. Answer Aileen Mellon. Against Stephen. Answer Sean Mooney. Against. Answer Maeve O'Neill. For. Answer Martin Riley. Against. Uh, Councillor Sinoni Barr. Against Stephen. And Councillor Brian Tierney. Against. Thank you.
Three seconds, remember, just to total this up. Okay, members, uh, six four twenty eight nine against and the amendment falls. So we remove the amendment and move them back to the original motion. Members, I don't see anybody further wanting to speak, so I'm going to ask Councillor Farrell, do you want to sum up on the original motion now? Yeah, uh, thanks, Mayor. Uh, I'd just like to thank everybody uh, for speaking in such positive terms about the need to expand McGee. Uh, I think everybody is on the same page that it will provide massive benefits to this city and district uh, once expanded. Uh, I remember when I read the New Decade New Approach deal when it came out in early January last year and I saw that McGee was in there, I thought, right, happy days. Uh, but I have been disheartened uh, to see that there was very little movement since then. Obviously, we have the medical school, we've got the relocation of health sciences, and that's all really positive. But we need to get the 10,000 students, and to do that, there needs to be proposals about getting the 10,000 students. Uh, so the sooner we see that, the better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Farrell, now we'll move to the vote. Members, is there any member there while they vote against the the motion of Councillor Farrell. Could you put on the chat box or make, make it clear? No. Okay. The motion of Councillor Farrell passes um, unanimously. So well done, Councillor Farrell. Members, moving on. Councillor Edwards, they move. I'm happy to take the motion as read. Happy enough with that. Could I have a seconder, please? I'll second uh, it, yeah. I, th I think we've got uh, quite a few come on there. There's the first in the chat box holding on, Jose. Go ahead, Councillor Edwards. Thank you, Mayor. And I'm happy to bring this motion to Council tonight. Um, regarding Sam Mills, I, I do believe it's an important issue that needs to be ra raised. Say Mills Village has a proud history, Mayor, um, from when the Herdman Brewers first came to the village in 1835 to establish a mill, and in doing so, providing over 1,500 local jobs uh, to be in one of the first areas in the north to have actual electricity. Um, Sain also has got a proud sporting history in both football and cricket, and it has also been widely known throughout its history to be an area that is truly integrated in terms of community and in terms of sport. But since the Herman's Mill closed back in 2003, and with it, the ending of funding uh, provided to the local community, Sayan Mills has fallen into a state of disrepair. And while I fully welcome the Sayan Mills master plan um, and the attempt to rejuvenate the village, I am disappointed the plan has not been advanced despite uh, being announced over a year ago and being discussed over 10 years ago. Um, I understand that the pandemic uh, has caused delays, but I do believe it is important now that Council relooks. Um, at the master plan and its key themes um, and the potential capital projects that are outlined in the plan. Uh, one of these things, Mayor, is the Mighty Mourn, um, and it's my belief that the entire Mourn site walk uh, is des desperately in need of being redeveloped. Council's lease expires next year in the area. It is one of the few outdoor recreation uh, areas across the whole of the Dare. And while I do welcome current work to repair the walkway, I think more needs to be done to develop the entire area. and. Also, in terms of outdoor recreation uh, and sport, um, I would welcome a feasibility study um, and to extend in the more trade walk north east Strabane, south to Victoria Bridge, west to the Dean Claddy. I think there's massive opportunity there for greenways and activity um, in the area. And also, um, we also do need investment in sporting facilities in St. Mills. The cricket club, football club have, have long um, uh, histories, um, but they have had to recently self fund their own basic facilities as the council has not done anything for them. And I do think that this is a disgrace uh, in itself, given that the investment that has gone elsewhere in the district 
And given the amount of people and children that these two clubs provide for um, in St. Rose, promotion is also all the more important given the potential of significant investment in the Herman's Mall site. And while the SDLP have been working closely with investors um, the past number of years, I will wait uh, an, a formal announcement um, of their plans before commenting uh, publicly on it. And just lastly, Mayor, well, I do understand understand the constraints um, on capital budgets and capital plans within Council. I do know that major projects in Straban and Derry are taking priority, but it's my personal view uh, that this cannot be done at the disadvantage of our rural areas such as say and Mills. I urge support uh, for the motion. Thank you, Mayor. And th thank you, Councillor Edwards. Okay, members. Um, Councillor Boyle, Michaela Boyle. Thank you, Mayor. And just want to thank Councillor Edwards for bringing the motion to Council. We in Sinn Féin will be supporting the motion. Uh, the regeneration and master plan for the village of Sion Mills is indeed part of the overall local community development plans that uh, Council and councillors with community partners have been central and key in its making. As part of the Cyan Mills Glebe and Claddy Cluster Village Plan, it does set out key opportunities to link and bring villages closer together and improving the walkways and river trails, which is a priority action within that cluster plan. Within the plan itself, it, it, is, it isn't the final document and it does allow for further development that supplements what already is within it. And will the, I think the extension of the Mornside Walk to, to Victoria Bridge will have many benefits for the whole area. Uh, improving the walkways and river trails uh, is just many of the issues that have been identified within the Claddy Glebe uh, Cyan Cluster Plan. And I'm sure the inclusion of extending that uh, will encompass all good things about the area. The, the River Mourn and Finn, uh, like all our rivers across this region, is indeed a splendid asset within our council area. And anything to enhance or develop this would be welcomed by locals and visitors to the area, which are many who come here to fish and enjoy the beauty of, of this area. Anything that adds to the health and well-being and improves the life of village habitants is welcomed. Mayor, we must all work together to bring about change, particularly change within our rural areas, to advance and deliver the many projects that we as councillors and a council would like to see brought to fruition. And to do this, we must be mindful at certain time of the year when we are asked to strike a rate, that we do this to support the projects, to get them over the line, and that we are being asked to support council and their eff efforts in doing so. However, I do find it intriguing that those who refuse to strike a rate are the ones that come with a long list of wishes um, to the detriment of the, the ratepayers. But we're happy to support this. It is a good motion, and um, I think it, be it will benefit the Cyan Mill, Claddy Glebe, Victoria Bridge, and Newton Stewart area. Thank you, uh, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Boyle. Uh, Alderman Kurrigan. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor, for allowing me on. And I do thank Councillor Edwards for bringing the motion. And uh, it definitely is something that's needed and it's something that's got to be kept on the agenda and uh, fully supportive of it, fully supportive of, of what uh, he's, he's seeking here in this here. And it's what all of the Dare and, and the sparing countries are looking for, the improvement in Cyan Mills. And uh, again, the the, uh, the Mornside Walk, as you referred to there, and these greenways and the walks, it's, uh, it's an excellent thing to be bringing forward. And it does help us, uh, it helps us all. We should be out doing a lot more walking round about. And, and if we have these facilities here, the people will use them. I mean, even even as it stands there, I mean, any time you're going through Stavane and that bypass, people are out walking around it. You, you, you know, and if you can get that improvement done, that link, that Mornside Walk coming from Stavane into Cyan and even onto Victoria Bridge and hopefully onto Newton Stewart and taking it across the hill over onto the Glebe and onto Claddy, I think it'll be a great benefit. And we are all seeking to try to try to get a bit fitter and to be truthful with it, Mayor, the, the, sometimes the, the council life can be a wee bit when you're sitting at meetings and different things, you're not out as much. Uh, and, and even at that, Mayor, uh, I, I do welcome, even as I do note there, came through in the news there recently there, we have an additional 30 million, Mayor, that's been allocated to the health service to tackle issues there. And we do welcome that. Uh, as I say, it's just been released in, the last, uh, in this last 10 or 15 minutes there, and we do welcome that. But again, anything to improve the health of people, but again, I would state even just the very last paragraph, which Councillor Edward stated, 
the council further recognise that our staff and resource implications and advancing capital projects, uh, you, you know, that could be put for any any uh, right across the deck for Castle Egg, Newton Stewart, and I'm sure for Dunhamana and everywhere else. So we're all in the same boat. But you no, know, fully supportive of Council Edwards' motion and, and welcome it and, and uh, wish it well. Hopefully we do get it moving here. Thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Kerrigan. Um, Alderman Jose. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, and I, I too welcome the motion. I'm going to start at the end of the motion. Uh, where Counts or Alderman Kerrigan finished off there. I, I think that is a, an important element, uh, a very important element within this overall motion. Uh, we have cried for long enough about actual support in the rural community of Spurn and Derg vis a vis the, uh, the support that's available within the neighbourhood and rural areas. So that is somewhere that Council can immediately impact. Uh, the input into all of our areas, but in this case in particular, in regard to sand mills, whereby uh, that support is there to assist with uh, application to the various funds. And um, we're not just talking about council funds here. We're talking about uh, the the access to funding for the various uh, projects that will be needed within sand mills. And moving up to the next, the the, uh, the penultimate paragraph with regard to outdoor recreational space, uh, members who were in the previous council will remember uh, that I did have a motion uh, before council that we needed to take action with regard to the mill site and and the playing facilities down there. Fortunately, uh, the the sports clubs themselves have been able uh, to get back onto those sites and. We need to support them as they continue to attempt to develop the facilities on those particular locations. And back to the last paragraph, that's where our council advice and, and uh, officers can come in and support that. With regard to the walks, it's already gone over. I'm not going to go into it any further. But subsequent to, to the motion with regard to overall, with overall regard, to rural provision vis-a-vis -vis city and Stuban town. We've, we've had Councillor Maguire with regard to Newton Stewart, um, um, Councillor McHugh with regard to Castle Derg. Now we have uh, other element within the Derg area, namely Cyan Mills, bringing it all together. Uh, and it's a very welcome motion. I thank Councillor Edwards for, for uh, moving the motion. I'm very pleased to be able to second that. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Jose. On that, uh, members, I am seeing no further speakers here, so I am going to pass it on to Councillor Evers to sum up on his motion. Thanks, Mayor. I thank everyone for the support. But just to remember or to remind Sinn Fein that uh, we have as a council received additional DFC funding that more than covers the deficit at the time when the rate was struck. We were calling for that uh, money before the rate was struck, um, and I won't make any apologies. For asking for additional investment uh, in my own DEA um, out of any money uh, in this council because it's, it's desperately lacking. So that's my position on that. And I just want to thank Mayor um, Alderman Kerrigan and Hussey for their, their kind comments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Members, the motion's there fronty. Is there anybody against the motion? Could you let me know now or put it on the chat box? I'm not hearing any the same the voices in this one. Okay, members, we'll take this motion as unanimous, and the motion passes on Councillor Evers. Members, moving on, Councillor O'Neill, they move. Thank you, Mayor. Um, can I um, have the motion motion as read? Just two seconds here until we get on the screen. Yeah, that was right. Can we have a second or Councillor O'Neill? Councillor O'Neill, you're muted. I'll second it. Mayor, happy to second it. There's, who was the first one? Sorry. Rachel right. there, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ferguson. 
Okay, go ahead, Councillor Neil. Thanks, Mayor. Um, for so long, the dominant narrative of our modern culture is that humans are separate from nature, that we can endlessly extract from nature without consequence, treating nature as property and an object to be managed solely for human purposes. However, the ancient view of the world's indigenous communities, a view that is old as our hulls, that all life is interconnected and interdependent, is now re-emerging through this rights of nature movement. We rely on a healthy environment. We are dependent for our well-being on the well-being of the environment. We are in a relationship with our environment. The environmental justice movement recognises that it is those communities who are most deprived and also communities of colour who are hardest hit by an unhealthy environment. It is ordinary working class communities that are targeted by pollutant industries and who are most exposed to pollution. What rights of nature can do is to rebalance the systems of governance to allow communities to assert their rights to a healthy environment. But it also allows nature the rights to exist, to flourish and to naturally evolve. When we think of who justice is for, is it for humanity alone? We've granted legal personhood to corporations, which grants them the ability to be visible uh, in court and to have their voices heard as a person protected under law. Nature knows injustice, but who will speak for the trees? Who will speak for the rivers and who will speak Who will speak for wild habitats and species? There are incredible examples worldwide of how countries or mun and municipalities have granted rights to nature. Rights of nature is embedded in the constitutions of Bolivia and Ecuador. In New Zealand there in 2018, they gave rights to the Wanganui River, recognising that the river is a giver of life. They have established a board of trustees to protect and enforce the rights of the river, and now the 180 miles of her is no longer owned by humans. Imagine for the river foil system and its tributaries and the ecosystems within it. We know that a, a proportion of our drinking water comes from the river Fahung, but the health of this river is in jeopardy when we have an environmental protection system that licenses polluters. We need to learn how to be good stewards again. We belong to one planet and we must look at our rivers and landscapes as living systems. This motion recognises that we are part of a biogeographical continuum and that's why it's important to work with all neighbouring councils to work to protect the river foil and its tributaries, our shared oceans, the air we breathe and share, our peatlands and our mountains. This motion is not a rights of nature law nor is this motion prescriptive as to what, to, what rights of nature means for our council. Um, but it's actually more appropriate at this stage. It's a commitment by our council to develop a dialogue uh, with the local community to declare a declaration for the rights of nature, as well as practical strategies to shift the way we make decisions and change the way we treat nature. But it also helps create a shift in the way we see ourselves as part of a loving community, not as the only members of a loving community. We need to reimagine a world where we treat nature as a loving re relation and work to restore our connection with nature. We can again be leaders here in the actions we take to protect our environment, becoming the first on these islands to make a commitment to the rights of nature. As we have led before with our climate action plan, with the work we've done on biodiversity and on the zero waste circular economy strategy, and in promoting this motion, uh, Queen's University School of Law has already been in touch to offer their support to Council in the delivery of this motion. Um, and I just want to finish, uh, Mayor, with a quote from the Duwamish tribe. Um, the earth does not belong to us. We belong to the earth. This we know. All things are connected like the blood which unites one family. Whatever befalls the earth befalls the children of the earth. We did not weave the web of life. We are merely a strand in it. Whatever we do the, do the web, we do to ourselves. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor O'Neill, for that. Um, Councillor Mooney. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'd like to thank Councillor O'Neill for bringing the motion. Um, Chair, we note that the rights of nature is a growing legal and social movement. Upon reading under this motion, it is clear that proponents of this view contend that laws grounded in rights of nature direct humanity to act appropriately and in a way consistent with modern evidence-based science, which tends to show the interconnectedness of the humans and the natural world. The approach, if I, if I understand it correctly, reflects the following reason. First, since the recognition of human rights is based in part on the philosophical belief that those rights emanate from humanity's own existence, 
Logically so too do inherent rights of the natural world arise from the natural world's own existence. A second and more pragmatic argument asserts that the survival of humans depends on healthy ecosystems, and so protection of nature's rights in turn tends to advance human rights and well-being. The theory itself essentially compares rights of nature to that of human rights and the moral imperative to change the law and how it looks at nature and its properties, rather than, rather than just as commodities, but as properties with certain fundamental rights. We see an example of this in 2012 in New Zealand, where the national government, the Maori people, concluded their, their first RON agreement, awarding the Wanganui River legal personhood and guardianship by a joint council. Changes have also occurred in India, Bolivia, and Ecuador, but most recently uh, in the Blue Mountain, in the Blue Mountain City Council in Australia, uh, in April there passed, where their council adopted an RON motion. As one councillor said, it is a paradigm shift where nature is recognised as having its own legal right to exist, regenerate and evolve. But coming to home, our council at the moment is presently moving on all the outworkings of the motions passed on climate emergency and biodiversity, amongst others. We can see this in projects such as the creation of wild flower meadows and a pollinator plant seeking to protect our indigenous native bee population, as examples in this area. I can see as a member of the planning committee and our own council that officers already work within the confines of legislation and policy in relation to habitats and environmental provisions under domestic and EU laws. However, there's merit in council seeking to, to look at operational planning and long-term decision-making for inclusion of rights of nature into corporate business. By way of example, in the recent past, we passed a motion on social value for use in our own tendering motions. Uh, but, we could have, but we could also have officers look at the way of incorporating rights of nature into this process as well. We note that motion seeks uh, collaboration with representatives of civic society and to seek a declaration for the rights of nature for council to adopt it if so chooses and to engage our neighbours in Donegal. I look forward to that paper coming before committee to further expand Thanks. this motion. Sorry, thank, Millie, you, could you bring your, thank you, thank you. Uh, Councillor Jackson. Okay, thanks, Mayor. Mayor, um, I want to thank Councillor O'Neill for bringing the motion to council. And on behalf of Sean Fain, I'm pleased to say that we will be supporting the motion. Uh, and I want to thank um, James Orr from Friends of the Earth, who who authored this motion. Um, and he, he took the time to phone members and answer any questions we may have and help explain the ethos of, of this campaign is around changing mindsets. Um, Around around nature, and it was it was really good to hear from uh, to hear James's enthusiasm on the subject, and I look forward to working with him um, as we move forward. But it was it was it was it was encouraging to hear James um, explain that the rights in nature won't be at the expense of development. Um, we've. We've heard at this meeting the importance of master plans. I don't know how many times we've heard ma master plans mentioned, and we've heard of the importance of play provision, recreational space, <coughs> and we've acknowledged uh, the massive housing crisis that we're experiencing right across um, our city and district. And Mayor, we we're blessed um, within our district to have special designated areas such as the River Fahan, the Foyle. Um, and the spare and AOMB and many others, which rightly deserve additional protection. But in terms of this motion, we need to recognise the the need to protect the entire ecosystem, and we look forward to working with the Galleran, Friends of the Earth, and others to do so. So, Mayor, we're happy to support the motion. Look forward to reports coming back to committees in, in relation to advancing it. And um, we look forward to the consultation events. So, um, um, and I just want to thank Councillor O'Neill again for bringing the motion to Council. Thank you.
Members, I'm getting word through that um, there's technical issues in the guild hall again. Um, suggest we, we give it a few minutes and hopefully the mayor can join us again. Member Sados, back on. Yeah. Sorry, sorry about that. We're having technical problems here in the Gulf Hall tonight. Um, members, the last one there was uh, Councillor Jackson was speaking. So, Councillor McKinney, would I be afraid? Uh, thank you for letting me in, Mayor. I'll just be very quickly because most things have been said by by uh, Councillor Neil, and thank you, Councillor Neil, for bringing it. Very important issue, uh, and uh, it sort of stole my thunder a bit because I was going to talk about New Zealand, and just really wouldn't it be great that if the the, the foil in the morn and the tributaries could be recognised in the same way that the New Zealand government have recognised the I'm not going to even say it the one that starts with W because I can't pronounce it, but we fully support this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kenny. Alderman Ramsey. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a uh, wee addition amendment there. Uh, basically, it's just to increase the stakeholder uh, group there that would be involved in the, the future consultations, uh, including the DERA, NFU, UFU, and any of our local uh, farming groups within our council area. Um, and like to thank. Councillor O'Neill for bringing forward this motion and our party fully support uh, this motion going forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ramsey. Just three seconds so we get that on. I Alderman Ramsey. It. I was seconded. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Tavelli. Three seconds, members. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Kerrigan. All right, Mayor. Uh, no, I, I, I I'll withdraw my comments. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, members on the amendment. I um I don't see any further is there any further speakers on that? No. So members will go to a vote on the on the amendment here. Or sorry, two seconds. Councillor Heaney, was this on the amendment? Yes, <clears throat> yes, Mayor. It's, it's just the, and I don't know if the process involves a further amendment, but just to expand that to the IFA as well, given that this is also taken on Donegal County Council. So if we're going to cover farming organisations, then we need to cover them all. Uh, so I'll, I'll leave it in your hands to see how you want to handle it. Alderman Ramsey, could we take it that as included? Absolutely no problem including that on it, as many stakeholders as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ramsey. Um, thank you. Happy to support the amendment. Councillor O'Neill. Okay, members. Um, is there anybody out there looking to vote against the, the amendment?
Nothing at all. Else, yes, okay, members. I'm not hearing nobody. So the amendment passes unanimously. Going back to the Going back to the substantial motion now, members. Is there anybody against the substantial motion? Okay, Councillor Lee, will you come and sum up? Thank you, Mayor. Um, and thanks uh, to everyone for uh, their supportive words. Uh, this is actually a really historical uh, moment uh, that that our council is uh, supporting um, this commitment to the rights of nature. Um, I'm happy to support the amendment. I, um, you know, it, it, this is stronger when it's a when it's a broader group, and you know, I think we could uh, list even more stakeholders in this. You know, including the many environmental uh, protection campaigns that exist across the island, um, and so you know, I think I think uh, we welcome anybody who wants to engage. And protecting the rights of nature, um, and uh, you know this re it really is an incredible concept, and this is a really exciting moment. Um, this is restoring a voice, the power, um, the power of the law to the rights of our landscape, rivers, mountains, woodlands, um, coastlines to flourish and to regenerate. And and across across this island, our communities have have already spoken up uh, on behalf of of these um, these parts of nature, which we so much value. Um, and we're standing up to corporate and to commercial threats um, against nature and against the exploitation of nature. Um, so I just want to say this is a very historic moment. Um, in, uh, in our ancient Irish uh, law, we actually uh, had a concept like this uh, where, where nature was uh, respected uh, within their rights. Uh, so we're, we're drawing on our ancient traditions uh, where we look forward to Address the the climate crisis uh, and biodiversity crisis that we're that we're in, um, and I just want to thank everybody for supporting the motion. Thank you, thank you, Councillor O'Neill. Okay, members, I'm seeing a few abstains here. Is there any member against the substantial motion here? No. So, uh, Alderman Corrigan, abstain, and Alderman Hosse, abstain in there. That's noted, members. I'm seeing no more further. So, the substantial motion passes. Okay, members. Moving on to Councillor Hargan. Do move. Mayor, can I take the motion as read? You can. Have you got a second there? Councillor Hargan, could I have a seconder for Councillor Hargan's motion, members? Thank you, Councillor O'Neill. I thought we were away again there. Go ahead, Councillor Hargan. Thank you. Uh, as everybody knows, uh, you know, the phenomenon of uh, wealth inequality has uh, has been gathering pace. Um, we uh, hear of the uh, a legacy of deprivation, um, poverty, um, but unfortunately, uh, that's been rising. It's been rising in Derry. It's rising across the Derry and Strabane district, and it's rising right across the Northwest. Um, we know from the stats um, that have been revealed from the expert advisory panel to uh, the anti-poverty strategy that, uh, uh, you know, 27% of, of the people who are, of the 400,000 people uh, living below the poverty line in the north are living here in our in our district, um, which is an incredible number. And as was mentioned earlier, one in three children uh, in our district are are living below the the poverty line. So action to turn this around, uh, as difficult as it might be, uh, as global as it might seem, uh, is is completely necessary because all the other challenges that we're talking about um, are are going to be. Uh, if we can't address inequality, we are not going to be able to address many of the, the challenges we face. And if you look around, uh, you see that 
uh, many workers, uh, the people who we called heroes during the pandemic, are all demanding very significant pay increases to make up for a decade or more of losses. Nurses, healthcare workers, uh, council workers demanding 10 percent, um, classroom assistants demanding 10 percent, SEND workers, uh, the people who take care of um, vulnerable children demanding 10 percent. Uh, workers in the community sector today made a presentation to the Stormont um, uh, Communities Committee uh, and reported that there uh, many of them haven't had a raise in 15 years. Uh, and this is really, we know, this is what pay, pay is like uh, across the, the, the Northwest and in our district. Um, and many people are trapped in, in low wage jobs. Um, people may know that the, the, the minimum wage is uh, 891, uh, but if you're, if, you're, um, if you're less than 18 years old, uh, you can be paid as low as 460 uh, to an hour. Uh, and unfortunately, there are some sectors where that kind of low pay is rife um, and young people deserve to be paid, uh, I believe, uh, equal pay for equal work. Um, so I think we need uh, uh, a pay raise for a lot of people. And one of the things that was established in the new decade, new approach, along with many, many other things, uh, there is a section on workers' rights, uh, is that Stormont can now uh, devolve the setting of minimum pay levels. Uh, which I think is a hard won victory, uh, which means that our uh, assembly can now take control of minimum wage levels and, and set uh, new wage levels. Uh, and, and that would give us the ability to set real living wages that would be based on the actual cost of people's lives um, and, and to give people an uplift. Um, so uh, Stormont, unfortunately, or the executive and the ministers involved haven't yet uh, taken action uh, to uh, devolve uh, pay, uh, sorry, to devolve uh, minimum pay levels. Uh, so this motion calls for them to urgently act to do that. Um, I think that this is something, if it happened, uh, would uh, help to raise uh, the living standards of probably, if not tens of thousands of people across uh, the district in the north, but uh, but hundreds of thousands of people uh, who are trapped in low wage. Uh, and, and this will Thanks help Hargage, people. Do you bring your remarks to a close, please? I will, Mayor, yeah, and I think this will have a, a profound impact uh, on challenging uh, inequality and, and much of the deprivation that we see around us. So we'll stop there, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Hargan. Okay, Councillor Mel. Thank you, Mayor, for bringing me in, and thank you to Councillor Hargan for bringing this motion forward. Um, I just wanted to comment on, you know, the minimum wage and the actual living wage, we hear all too often of the working poor. Um, when people look at poverty, poverty um, stats and things, they can often um, assume and generalize how people live their lives. But these are people that's working really hard, sometimes two and three jobs, and they're still coming out with their outgoings a lot more than their incomings, and that's just not acceptable anymore. Um, they have to be given the real living wage. Um, we've seen throughout COVID uh, how people continue to work. Those frontline services, people in retail, who have really risked their lives to accommodate us and make sure that we were served within our communities and within society. So I also think that we need to look at how people are seen in terms of need and, and their skill sets that they bring. Um, and they should not be looked on as um, a basic minimum wage should be they should be pleased and, and grateful for it we should be looking at them as our frontline workers not just through covid but throughout our society and how we view them um so again thank you to councillor harkin for bringing this forward i would also like to add that um, a minimum wage is set as a minimum standard it's not something that people have to adhere to they should be looking at and being thankful and grateful for the service that workers put in Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Mel. Councillor Reilly? Uh, yes, Mayor, thanks uh, for bringing me in and thanks to Councillor Harkin for tabling uh, this motion here this evening. Um, you know, it, it'll come no, as no surprise that at the time that the, the New Decade New Approach document was being signed up to in order to get the Assembly restored after three years of inaction, uh, it was at that time that we had uh, our frontline key workers in the health service out on strike. Uh, trying to get 
their entitlements, their wages uh, to match what their uh, counterparts in other places uh, were being paid. So uh, it, it is uh, totally right that the new decade, new approach document did detail uh, wages and the importance of that. Uh, and, and as we know, uh, we, we spent many years uh, without an assembly. We have the assembly mandate now coming to an end shortly. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, we spent a lot of the mandate uh, without any government, uh, you know, and it was only through the workers uh, who went on strike, uh, who forced uh, the two big parties to overcome the differences and get back into government. Uh, Mayor, I think if you look at the last line, though, of the motion that uh, Councillor Harkin has tabled, it talks about Council giving its full solidarity to efforts to establish real living wages. Uh, only a few moments ago, uh, the same person was not supporting uh, the concept of the city deal and uh, the need to get good paying jobs into our council area. Uh, we all know that the McGee expansion is crucial to improve student numbers, which will have a huge impact on our, on our economy and society here. But so too are the likes of the uh, University of Ulster's Carl this project where we will in, uh, attract in well-paying, highly qualified people to this region. So I think we need to see all of those things in the round. Uh, and Mayor, it's not lost on me that in the actual New Decade New uh, Approach document that Councillor Harkin has based this motion on, the 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 final line of the of the of that motion. Um, you know, in relation to the paragraph in the New Decade New Approach, it uh, talks about the need to ensure that no one is discriminated against because of their age. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm not sure after listening to Councillor Harkin when he proposed it, why he left out that element of that paragraph in the New Decade New Approach. Uh, so, Mayor, I, I just want to make a small amendment. Uh, it's just to add into the motion that Councillor Harkin has and this direct text from the New Decade New Approach document in relation to supporting uh, uh, efforts to, to end any discrimination that people may have in relation to their wages based on their age. So, Mayor, I'll put that amendment into the chat box now. Thank you. Thank you for that, Councillor Riley. Okay, members, just two seconds until we get the amendment on the screen. And Councillor Riley, would you have a second or uh, maybe? I'll second that, Mayor Councillor McKenna. Thank you, Councillor McKenna. Well, Mayor, I'll put the text in the line and it's just to go at the very end of the uh, initial proposal uh, before us. Uh, so I insert those lines after the world's real living wages at the end of the motion. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Reddit. Okay, until we get that on the screen. Um, Councillor McKinney, do you want to speak on the amendment? Uh, I'll speak on both of you to mind, uh, Mayor, please. Okay. Okay, well, we fully support uh, Councillor Harkin's motion and the amendment. Everyone has the right to have a real living wage. And uh, I would appeal to all the parties to work together sooner rather than later to implement this. And we will support the motions. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McKinney. Older man Kerrigan. Do you want to talk on the amendment? I, I'm content. I'll speak on the two there, Mayor, if you're all right. Thank uh, you. I, I, I'm content with the amendment there put forward by, by Councillor Riley. I have no issue with that. Um, the age shouldn't be a shouldn't be a concern in regards to employing staff, uh, whether too young or too old. It shouldn't it shouldn't make a difference if they're able to do the job, that's the main issue. So we are content to support Councillor Harkin's motions, uh, motion here, sorry. And um, but I just I just would just would point out, Mayor, uh, there is the issue there uh, with with the employers there. Uh, and again, I, I I see no issue, but I do see an increase over the years there 
from the minimum wage. And I know that as stated, that's, that's a minimum wage, but there has been quite a substantial increase whenever you look at the, um, whenever you speak to fellas out in building sites in that regard there. And, and, and what I mentioned that, labourers and that, but still, again, uh, you, you know, I, I, I have no issue with it there and support the motion and the loving wage, but it's just the case, Mayor, out of, from what I'm seeing here, the 77,640 uh, VAT and pay as you earn registered employers in Northern Ireland, uh, the vast majority of them, from the information, I think it's in excess of 75% of those are small employers. And you've just got to factor in the, the additional pressure. They're not all large multinationals or large companies employing several hundred people. The vast majority of employers are small local far, uh, family businesses and things like that. And it's just keeping the right level there that they have enough support to pay the minimum wages because some of these businesses there, when you factor in the, the, the hours that the, um, that the business owner or if it's a partnership or it's a small limited company, you, you know, you, you know, they're, they're not all massive money making businesses here. We just have to remind that the vast majority of employers are small, maybe with only one or two employees. You, you, you know, and Mayor, just factoring in there, if you, you know, if you speak to anybody in the farm, you, you know, the vast majority of them, particular men working with beef or suckler cows, you, you know, when you add the hours them men would work compared to what their profit is, you know, they wouldn't be touching a fiver an hour, never mind. 91 you know so you you know as grand i have no difficulty supporting these ones here and the, on the low pay role and congratulate all for the work that was done during the pandemic just the case the farmers were vital as well and and they you know the support's got to be for the self-employed men as well so it's just fact and none that everybody gets an equal share on it here but no i we're content to support the motion thank you very much Mark. thank you thank you alderman Kerrigan. councillor gallagher Thank you, Mayor, for letting us in. Mayor, when I seen this amendment coming and I heard Councillor of the Broadest, I am and his uh, what I would call it is twisted I, uh, account of what the Councillor that brought this motion said earlier around the city did. I think it was very twisted. And you see, when I see this coming forward, I think it's a very cheap move. And, and when I say it, I'll say to him and his party, and who are in the executive and whose party knows the discrimination that we face here in the West around jobs, around investment, and around what the councils were talking about earlier, education and the number of placements and the number of investment that goes into that education, the difference in roads, the difference in rail, investment the difference in the investment in the economy and in the environment and bear to see when we look at the inequality and in wage income of what you can earn in the west here in the northwest versus what you earn in belfast for example it's a massive, massive difference. And that has been going on for a long time. The proposers party has been in government. And I would like him to explain how this executive, and he uses the word ensure, tell the people of the Amsterdam to ensure when, as I said earlier, We've had targeting social need, new targeting social need, Good Friday Agreement, St Andrews, anti-poverty strategies, program for government, new DNA. Hi, sir Gallagher, could you bring your comments to the please? None of it delivered. Yeah, none of it. And now he brings a, how many say executive to ensure. That's a joke. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gallagher. Okay, members on the amendment. I don't see any further members um, will only speak on that. So I'm going to take it to uh, and vote. I see um, members. I'm not hearing any dissenting voices. I see Councillor Gallagher is looking to abstain on this. Members, is there anybody against the amendment?
Are you Councillor Donnelly, Chair? Are you against it, Councillor Donnelly? In. Okay, uh, Councillor Donnelly is in as well. Okay, members. Thank you, Councillor Donnelly, for that. Okay, members, the amendment passes. Now, going back to the substantial motion. I see no further speakers. So, Councillor Hargan, do you want to come on to sum up on the substantial motion? Thanks. I do, yeah. Uh, so, uh, first of all, thank you to uh, Councillor uh, uh, um, Gallagher for his comments there, and I'll, I'm going to talk a wee bit about that in a second. Um, Councillor Mellon mentioned the work in power, and I think I'm glad she did because, uh, you know, we've talked about the work in power here, uh, and that is a, a that's a concept now that has gained more and more traction. And these are hard working people, uh, a, 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 as Councillor Mellon said, sometimes working two or three jobs, uh, many of whom, uh, unfortunately, are dependent on food banks. Uh, and and this is what uh, action on pay can actually put a dent in, can try to do something about. It's not going to be the only way that we challenge inequality and poverty, uh, but it is it, it, it is certainly one way we can do this by taking action to raise uh, up the basic minimum uh, wage level. And, and Councillor Mellon's right. Uh, you know, this is the basic minimum wage. We have to be aiming for much, much higher for as many people as possible. Uh, and we want even the basic minimum wage to be a living wage for everybody. Now, Councillor uh, Riley, yeah, I think that, um, I, I don't know what he was at there, but, uh, or I do, um, but let, let me read out the section uh, uh, of the new decade, new approach that refers to uh, the devolution of uh, 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 setting the wages. There's a whole number of things in there. Uh, parties agree that the executive should commit to becoming a living wage employer. They further agree the ex executive should move to ban zero hour contracts, not in the motion. Um, they also, that the powers uh, to set minimum wage levels should be made a devolved matter. Uh, separately, it says an age and goods and facilities and services bill should also be uh, put forward by the executive as a basis for ensuring that no one uh, is discriminated because of their age. Um, so, you know, not everything in the employment section uh, it, it, that's in new decade, new approach was in my uh, original motion, nor did Councillor Riley I uh, think they add in everything. Uh, maybe he was trying to say that somehow uh, a councillor who talks about young people being exploited in the hospitality sector and other sectors and getting paid four sixty an hour uh, doesn't care about wage discrimination, utter nonsense. Um, and I hope he will join the campaign of the hospitality workers who are demanding uh, fair pay, fair treatment for workers in the hospitality sector. Well, sorry, hard uh, do that, you wrap it that's up a campaign. That's a campaign that's coming. Um, but, you know, thank you to the uh, members for their support and, and, and uh, you know, we hope that the executive and the parties that are in the executive, like the SDLP, can actually make this a reality rather than something that's sitting on the shelf. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, members, on the, we're going to go to the vote now on the substantial. Members, is there anybody against the substantial motion here? If there is, could you let me know now or put on the chat box? Okay, members. Stantol vote is unanimous. So that motion passes. Okay, members. That's the end of Agenda 12. Members open for information. Agenda is 13, 14, 15 open for information members. No one. So members, I'd like to they bring this meeting to a close tonight and thank you very much everyone who took part on it and many many congratulations we actually ended before 10 30 tonight so well done and i'd like to wish you all a nice weekend thank you members
Thank you, Mayor. Well, Mayor. Well done, well Mayor. Thank you. Good man. Well done, Mayor. Yeah, well Thank done. you, Mayor. Well done. Thank you, Mayor.